Welcome to Fret Knob. My name's Rob. My name's Colton, and welcome to the Meet Your Maker series. Hey, so if you guys have been part of the channel, if not, please subscribe. If you've been part of the channel, you know we did the High Gain series, which we purchased out of our own pockets. Ten custom guitars from the some of the best luthiers around the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're at the very end of that series. If you haven't seen them, please just go look in the videos on the site, and you'll see all of those reviews. And uh, so we thought it would be really cool if we went back and sat down and interviewed some of those makers and let you meet them, see what makes them tick yep. while they build the guitars they do. The thought um, process. Yeah, kind of oh. let them explain to you what they do yeah. and maybe help kind of bridge that gap of being a little bit scared about sending your money out to the ether and don't know where it's going, who's right. getting it, or what you're getting back. We appreciate you guys for all the support and what is this series called? The Meet Your Maker series. Welcome to Fret Not. My name's Rob. My name's Colton, and welcome to the Meet Your Maker series. Hey, so tonight, guys, I hope you tuned in because we got somebody special in here. Sorry about the video. We're kind of cramped trying to get this all in, but we would like to introduce you guys to Mr. Reichhart from Reichhart Guitars. Nate? Hey, how you guys doing today, man? Man, we're doing great, man. We uh, started this series because we just thought you know, these guitars are expensive. It's a lot to send somebody money and you don't know nothing about it. And, you know, we try to review them and give you an idea that your money's safe. But we wanted to introduce everybody to some of the builders, you know, and let you talk. So there you go. Yeah. Um, do you, Mr. Reporter, <laughs> do you have questions for him? Um, I guess just the, um, the basic one is when did you start playing guitar? Man, I started playing when I was 12. Uh, my grandfather had an old, old guitar that I think he bought from a Sears catalog back in 1950. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And, uh, man, this thing, the action on it, you could barely play it. You could barely do anything on it. Yeah, I don't think the strings have been changed for probably 20 years. And, yeah. uh you know, he gave it to me and my folks encouraged me to do it. And within three months, it was Christmas and they bought me like a, a hundred dollar Fender Strat when I was 12 for yep. Christmas. And it came with a little amp. And, you know, I've been playing since then. I think after a year, I traded that for, a, you know, a flying V. It was like a cream <laughs> flying V. And... Uh, you know, it's just gone from there, man. Cool. cool. That's kind of a, I didn't get it from my grandfather, but kind of the same thing. I believe my first one with the strings had probably been on it 15 years, and it was from Sears and Roebuck, too. <laughs> yep, yep. Good deal, good deal. It's nice to know that I wasn't the only one tortured as the youngster. So. Oh, yeah. It was It was bad. <laughs> awesome. Um, so the next one is when... Uh, when did you start making guitars? I started making guitars, uh, I think back when I was about 27 or 28, I'm 40 now. And uh, okay. I started in uh, the backyard, just in the backyard. I was working as a uh, environmental engineer at the time. And I was probably working anywhere from 80 to 90 hours a week. And I said to myself, this is, this is going to kill me. This has got to, there's right. got to be something better for me to do. And, you know, I've always like, like you guys know, I've always played guitar since I was 12 and I was like, well, maybe I can do that. I enjoy, you know, working on guitars and doing mods for my friends and things like that. And, uh, 
I found an ad in the back of a, a Stumac catalog for, uh, you know, places that you could learn how to build guitars. There was one in Michigan. Cool. Um, there was uh, there was a couple of others, but I ended up going to a place uh, called Roberto Vin in Arizona, of all places. Um, right? Yeah. Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. And um, it was just a six month course. We did one electric and one acoustic, and then you could do, you could make an amp or you could do pedals. They had a pickup winding course. Um, and they had, uh, I think the last two months was a repair course. So you got to learn all these cool things and uh so i did that course i did it was a six month course i quit my job uh of five years wow. yeah i quit it and i just made a totally complete break with it went to arizona for six months graduated from that and then i've been working in the industry since then wow that's crazy so just to elaborate a little bit i don't take up a lot of time but so i've spoken to a lot of the luthiers over in europe and I'm speaking about the ones, you know, kind of Central Europe. And almost every one of, one of them studied at some institute. I guess there's a lot in Italy for violin making before they started guitars. Yeah. They kind of, that's yeah. kind of how you cut your teeth over there, I guess, you know. But, well, now you know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, would you say that there is a particular genre of music that uh, inspires, like, how you build them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how come you're not building, like, uh, you know, P90s? <laughs> well, you know? yeah. See, that you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> there, there absolutely is a genre that I'm going for. It's, you know, it's heavy metal. I've listened to metal since I was, you know, probably nine years old. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, I... The, the moment, the epiphany <laughs> moment for me for metal was um, uh, I heard a, a buddy of mine called me over to his place and we were hanging out. Well, you know, you were just kids. And he put on this video of Judas Priest playing Painkiller. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, it was Painkiller. And you just saw this grainy black and white metal video of Halford screaming at the top of his lungs. You know, Glenn and KK playing these amazing Hamer guitars and they're just yep. shredding and it's just like, oh, my God, I, I've never heard anything like this. I've, I've got to learn more. I have to know more. And, you know, it just spiraled. Mm -hmm. It spiraled up from there. I, I listened to, you know, Pantera and, you know, a ton of, you know, modern bands, Megadeth, Metallica, of course. Uh, there are just so many great bands right now. Um, there really you know, is. Rusty There's Cooley. A lot out there that's good. Yeah, yep. you know, I, 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 you know, graduated onto you know Rusty Cooley and Jeff Loomis, and uh, you know mm -hmm. a lot of those guys. They're shredders. I mean, they're just absolute shredders, and uh, it, it just goes all all the way back to Glenn and KK doing that dual guitar, and it just. It was great. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I won't bore you with the story, but I've seen Priest seven times in yeah. my life. Yep. I've probably seen him five or six too. The most memorable concert was the Painkiller Tour. And um, I believe if I'm – oh, no, no, I was screaming for vengeance because they recorded that in Memphis where I was at at the time. Mm -hmm. And – you can't, we were on the 13th row center and they were filming from right behind us. You can't see me, but you can see my buddy because he's like six <laughs> four and he's got an afro like up here. And you, all you see is his afro doing this in the video. That was us. Awesome. But that was great. That was a great experience. Awesome. Yeah. I've seen him with, yeah. uh, I think I saw him first in like 98 with Ripper. And uh, that was mm -hmm. a great show. And then I saw him at the 40th anniversary of uh, uh, British Steel in California. Man, it was fantastic. Just fantastic. I bet so. I bet it was. Yeah. All right. On to the next one. Um, what gear do you play through? Uh, amps or pedals, et cetera? Yeah, what do you use? Mm -hmm. We would like to know. Inquiring well, minds. I'll tell you. There is – I have – when I'm testing out guitars, I have the same amp and it's, I'm 
literally, guys, it's just a line six spider. It's a small amp. He has it, one. Yeah, it's a great amp. He I've has had it one. For probably 10 I years. have the I have the original line six spider Borg Warner. Yeah, two twelve, and then he I, has a line six. I got a spider. Five. Yeah, a spider you know, yeah. like it's just it's sitting in the corner. I've had it for years. Um, hey, it's it just a great test amp. I I play yeah. through that every guitar that I build is tested and played through that and then it goes inside to my main rig that is a um it's a sigil forden head it's a little lunchbox head i think it's probably 15 or 20 watts and mm -hmm. uh, i also it goes through um the zool um noise gate and i've got yep. that splitter that it cancels the uh, the noise from the guitar and it cancels the noise from the head. So it's one of the best noise gates in the in the industry right now. Uh, and all that is going through uh, a fat bottom Frietti 412 cabinet that I've had for probably Ooh. 12 years now. It's my favorite cabinet, bar none. Bar none. So it's we're just we're bottom. just poppers. We're poppers. We're over here running, you know, uh, quad cortex through studio monitors. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's great. If it we're works, it's poppers. great. I know tons of guys that are yeah, working that. Just, so I love the quad cortex. It, it's it really sucks because we don't get to show off the quad cortex because we can take any guitar and make it sound any way. And if you're trying to compare them and review them, it's not fair. So we're stuck on a single patch, but one day we're going to break free of that patch. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to do other stuff. So. Yeah. 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 Good deal. You got to. Uh, would you consider making acoustic guitars or is that something you kind of maybe already dabble in? Uh, acoustics? Well, I'll tell you at my main job, you know, my day job, because Many luthiers have day jobs and everything like that. Of this course. is, you know, my night job. I still probably work in my shop uh, anywhere from, uh, you know, 40 hours to 60 hours a week. Uh, for wow. my day job, I, I've i worked at this job for probably 13 years now. And uh, the first six years of my career, uh, I built acoustic guitars and oh, carving, okay. carving braces putting together the box, putting on kerfing, uh, side bracing it, sanding it, binding it, finish sanding it, uh, getting it ready for finish. Uh, you know, that's one of the ways that I cut my, you know, I guess I cut my teeth uh, and got my chops really good is by sanding out and, and you know, making, I, I've probably made anywhere from five to 10,000 acoustic guitars. Um, wow. Yeah. And just carving. I mean, my main tool is a chisel. That's the main tool. Yeah. I watch some of your videos sometimes and, and a lot of your lives on Instagram. And I see you just sitting there working with tools. You know, I mean, yeah. I know everybody uses, you know, digital whenever they can, but I see, and that's just amazing to me because you don't know this, Nate, but my dad built custom homes for 40 years. And he had a shop bigger than our house with every woodworking tool you could ever imagine. And he wouldn't let me in there. <laughs> yep. Yep. His boy in a kid so, candy house, you know? Right. I was, I wasn't any good. I can't do nothing with that stuff. I can watch, but I can't do yeah. it. Either. But yeah, yeah. The main, the main tool that I still use in my shop. I mean, I use chisels all the time and that's a great way to get a great, uh, uh, you know, product. It, it it's, there's no other way sometimes. So. Cool. Nice. Um, and then maybe one that's a little more serious is where would you or would you like to see Reichardt guitars in the next five years? Boy, I'd love to see. I would love to see me. You want to be uh, on stage with Halford? <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm a homebody. I like my shop more than anything else. Uh, I got it, you know, my, my place, it's my place. I, I love it here. I got a great, great set of friends and, and, you know, uh, what I would like to see is, uh, uh, me just expanding and, and doing more guitar bodies, more guitar things, uh, experimenting with 
more guitar electronics and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really uh, honing my craft, you know, even more so than I have already. That's what I'd like to see. I'd love to see a, uh, a loaded up uh, book of orders uh, that are happening. Uh, right. So, now, you do know, you, I, let me, I, let me I ask you a part of that. Let me ask you just something about that. It's his question, but let me ask you something. So do you think in your knowledge that if you did that, if let's say that happened and your orders quadrupled or whatever, and do you think there is a source for you to get the right people to do that? Because that seems to be everybody's problem right now with any kind of business, man, is just being able to get good help. Yeah. Uh, I don't envision ever hiring anybody. That that's there probably just not in the books. Uh, I'm a one man shop and I expect it to be, you know, right on. And right. That's that's the thing. The the instrument has to blow people out of the water. It has to play right. with the best of them. You know, it, it this is a it's a custom guitar. It's a hand built guitar. That means that it's got to be perfect. They right. can't it can't be anything less than that. So well, I can testify. Uh, it's just, if, if it ain't perfect, I ain't never seen nothing closer. So yep. it's a really I nice appreciate guitar. That, man. Yeah. And that's what you, you know, you, you strive for. Uh, I've known several builders that have gone off on their own and done their own things and they do great at it. Uh, uh, and it's just like, I, I just don't ever imagine me hiring anybody to do right. any of the stuff that I do. I understand that 100%. And, and trusting your name and your brand in the hands of, of somebody else. You know, I, I respect that. Yeah. 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 If it's okay, got my so name on it, it's got to be me. We've yeah. kind of ran out of standard questions, but I, before you go, if you have time, if you don't have too many guitars lined up, I do want to ask you one other question about your business, and I hope it's not too personal, but can you get us a little bit of enlightenment on what happens, what your process is of selecting woods? I don't need to know where you buy it, but what all do you do to to get, because, man, those woods are, I know anybody can get fantastic wood, but the stuff on your guitars, man, it really stands out. So do you do anything special? Do you got somebody, you know, you got leverage on somebody or something, or how do you do that? <laughs> right? Yeah, well, <laughs> Well, the first thing is, I mean, I've done it for, I've been in this business for probably 13 years now, and I, I usually spend an hour to two hours every day online looking okay. for tone wood, you know, because okay. it's really important to have the tone wood that is seasoned and ready to go for the build. Okay. Uh, and I, you know, it's just like any other business. You foster relationships in the industry and you have relationships right. with, uh, you know, the people that provide you what you need, whether it be hardware uh, or tone wood. And mm -hmm. uh, I spend a lot of time uh, online looking at tone wood, trying to get the best stuff that I can for the right guitar. Um, now, that being said, it really comes down to the customer. Mm -hmm. It depends on, you know, what the customer wants. If he, if they want a very particular guitar or a very particular, you know, um, color on a guitar, it's, it's really important to guide that customer to the right piece of wood. Right, uh, right. And, and that's why and it's what we did. That's what you did with us. We called you and gave you three or four ideas. We didn't tell you to do anything. We just said, look, what if it was sort of like this, like this, and like this? Can you do that? And you were like, yep. And, I mean, you just told me what you was building it out of. So that's amazing because I wouldn't have known what to tell you. I mean, my my fallback would have been mahogany and maple cap. <laughs> that yeah. would have been my fallback, you know? Yeah. So the fact that you, you know, pulled that stuff and then you sent me pictures like a couple of days later of the blocks you were going to use. And I was like, man, I wasn't expecting all that. I just... It was going to be a regular guitar, but yeah, yeah, and that's what I do. That's that's what I like to have my customers have uh, because uh, a lot mm -hmm. of customers kind of don't know what they want. They they have an idea, and mm -hmm. you know, my job as a luthier, one of my jobs is to educate. 
you know, right. this would be a great thing for what you're wanting. Or, you know, this is if this is the color that you're wanting, oh, we can use this top or this top or this top because those shades of color would go great with these instead of right. maybe that one, you know. Right. Um, I've got I've got tons of you know, clear white maple, non-colored maple. I've also got a lot of colored maple for blonde guitars that just have great streaking in them. I've got, you know, tons of burl and spalted maple, all kinds of things like that. I've got myrtle. I've got basically, you name it, I probably have it. You know, buckeye, well, burl, anything like that. We're very impressed with what you sent us. And not only that, I mean, we've had ours now for or four months, three months, maybe. I think about that, like yeah. That. So, you know, and obviously we, we kept up with you, you know, before we ordered, while we ordered, and while you were making it, and we keep up with you now, and I see some of the stuff you build, man, and it's just like, when I first saw our block of wood, I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have something special, you know, that nobody else has got. Mm -hmm. And I do, but the rest of your guitars are special, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really nice. It's really nice. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, listen, it's a labor uh, love. To, to the audience out there, if you don't know who this is, this is the builder of Reichart Guitars. And if you don't know who they are, you are missing out. If there's anything in your persona that even begins to think about maybe getting a custom guitar made, if you don't contact this guy and at least hear what he has to say, um, you're, I, I feel like maybe we feel like you're kind of missing the boat on this because this guy does amazing work. Uh, the wood, just everything. It's a very meticulous guitar and you know, we got ours and we'll never let it go. There's no money that can buy it. It's just, it's just a one-off, you know, piece of art. Yeah. So well, Nate, you have been amazing. And we thank you for your time. We're going to get off of here and try to get this up so the masses can see it. We will be keep. Did you sell that eight string you took to Dallas? No, I still got it. It's the green uh, one. The green one, yeah, I still got it. Yep, oh, it'll be on nice. reverb here pretty soon. Uh, if I don't get a DM or something like that for somebody, so it'll be it'll be up on reverb. So, well, you might. Colton loves, you know. Colton loves green, so you might get a DM from Fred and I. <laughs> All right. Hit me up. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. We really appreciate you, as always. And uh, hopefully, you guys in the audience, hopefully we're going to have somebody else on here in the near future, and you get to meet somebody else that was in our High Gain series that built these guitars. And make sure there'll be links in this video to everything, how to get in touch with him, Go to his reverb shop. Go to his his web page. He's on IG, Facebook too, right? Yeah, Facebook too. Yeah, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. So if you look up Reichhart Guitars, you're gonna find him. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nate. Man, we really appreciate it. Um, for your time. Yeah. yeah. Have a great, great rest of your night. And go, you bet, build man. Some you guitars. guys as well. Appreciate it. <laughs> yep. All right, man. Thanks. Take care, guys. All yeah. right. Bye.